Hello guys, welcome to today's video and today we will be solving some of the MCQs which will be helpful for the electrical engineers as well as electronics and communication engineers. So starting with the first question, you know, the disadvantage of hunting in the synchronous machines is. So they are asking about the disadvantage of hunting. You know, in the synchronous machines, when a sudden load is applied, then what happens is the rotor shaft will try to settle down near the equilibrium position so during this course what happens is there will be a lot of stress on this rotor shaft so that is what is hunting is all about so if among the options the third option is correct which is it causes a large mechanic mechanical stress and fatigue in the rotor shaft okay next which of the following falls Falling faults occur more frequently in a power system. So they are talking about more frequently. You know, in a power system, like if there is a line, then what happens is, even if you have seen in, in our uh, streets and in, in our uh, homes, most of the time what happens is the power line, sometimes if one of them is grounded, then that is one of the common faults. And other is what happens is, if one of the line comes in contact with the neutral, then in that case also the fault will happen so this is the most uh, frequently faults that are seen in a power system this can happen because of the high winds or the trees falling on the power lines and all so th these are known as a single line to ground faults as these are the line is going to the ground okay so this is the correct answer next which one of the following is not required for a power diode we all know the basic diode is basically a conversion of ac to dc so it is basically a rectifier and then the power diode is used for high voltages and high currents okay so in that case what happens is if we see the following options so diodes are semiconductor devices so they are very high speed so this is one of the operations other is since they have to switch on and switch off so in that case the recovery time should be small which is okay and then the voltage drop across the diode also has to be less so this is also one of the features so among these they are the correct option and then we don't need the fast communication so here which is not required means fast communication is the correct answer next a magnetic field applied perpendicular to the direction of a motion of a charged particle so charged particle assume it as a charge q exerts a force on a particle perpendicular to both the magnetic field so magnetic field is there and this force acts in the direction perpendicular to the direction of motion of the particle so here it says about the when a force is applied when a charged particle is moving so this is basically the application of the Hall effect. We know in the case of a semiconductor, there are many applications of the Hall effect. This is used to know the type of the diode, P or N diode, or the direction of the diode. So this is a basic definition of the Hall effect. So among the options, Hall effect is the correct answer. Next. Which one of the following class of computers in relationship between is the relationship between the architecture and organization very close? You know the basic simple computer which we use in our homes, they have a CPU, they have a memory unit, and then they have a I.O. unit. So these are some of the basic units which you find in a very simple computer. And in this organization, in this the architecture is very simple. So among these options, these computers are also known as microcomputers, which are like desktops and PCs. So among these options, microcomputers is the correct answer. Whereas other computers like mainframe computers, supercomputers, these are very high-end computers and their architecture is very complex. Okay, next. The central processing unit consists of so CPU, you know, in a modern processor, if you see, it consists of ALU, which is arithmetic logical unit to carry out the mathematical operations, a control unit to decide where the data should go, and the registers in which the data is stored, and on which the ALU operations are performed. 
so resistors are needed and also internal bus is needed in most of the latest CPU if you know there is an inbuilt cache like L1 and L2 levels so in this case there will be an internal bus also so these are all the components of a CPU so the correct answer is the option 4 which is the ALU control unit registers as well as the internal bus next if the voltage across an element in a circuit is linearly proportional to the current through it so what they are saying is voltage is proportional to the linearly proportional to the current so we know that V is equal to IR where R is fixed so in that case V is proportional to I so this is the basic property of a resistor so among the options resistor is the correct answer okay next a cache has a 64 bit cache lines then how long does it take to fetch a cache line if the main memory takes 20 cycles to respond to each memory request and returns 2 bytes of data in response to each request so what happens is a main memory and cache is there so when these are interacting and then how much time it is taking here, here it is given as the total cache line length is 64 bytes and then it has also given as the 20 cycles are being taken to fetch 2 bytes okay so now we need to fetch 64 bytes so for each byte how many cycles so to so that means the number of cycles that are needed to fetch the 64 bytes is nothing but 64 by 2 which is equal to 32 so 32 bytes so 32 cycles 30 times it needs so that means 20 cycles into 32 so which is equal to 640 cycles so we need a total of 640 lines 640 cycles so as to fetch the entire 64 byte cache line because each cycle is taking 22 bytes so 640 cycles is the correct answer next the memory management function of a virtual memory does not include so you know basically a uh, MMU which is a memory management unit so in that case what happens is the virtual address is transferred into physical address so in this case it will help to like we have a physical address is a fixed so more or less it is fixed we cannot expand okay so this using the different virtual address which are pointing to the same PA is one of the applications of the MMU so with this what happens is we can show that the PA which is actually seen by this MMU so it is more so like it also handles the space allocation so this is a correct answer and then a program execute program relocation so let's say the program is here then since it also manages the space so program relocation can also be done and also code sharing like different virtual address like VA1, VA2 they can point to the same address PA1 so this can be used for a code sharing also for different programs which are using the different virtual address so code sharing is also a part of the memory management function so program execution is actually a part of the CPU and no way the MMU is concerned so here it says does not include so the correct answer is the program execution is not a part of the MMU next Thevenin's equivalent circuit consists of we know from our network theory classes the V Thevenin like where is a voltage source is in series with the R Thevenin so any circuit can any two port network can be replaced by this so it is nothing but a voltage source in series with the resistance so voltage source and a series impedance this is the Thevenin's equivalent of a two port network so this is very straightforward next the disadvantage of a typical MOSFET as compared to BJT so BJT is a normal transistors whereas MOSFETs are the semi means the complement which are using the semiconductors oxide so MOSFETs generally operate at a voltage levels but then here the current levels are less so in this case what happens is the handling capacity of MOSFET is very less power handling is less they are used for a small power handling cases so the correct answer is a reduced power handling levels okay. next 
a network which is a two port network so delivers a maximum power to the load resistance so it is saying the maximum power is delivered when the load resistance which is rl should be equal to what we know from the two port network like the if the load resistance is equivalent to the thevenin's resistance then in that case the power maximum delivered is high so from the options equal to the thevenin's resistance of the network so this is the correct answer this is from the maximum power transfer theorem and which is also straight forward next for rc phase shift oscillator using the fact the gain of the amplifier stage must practically be somewhere greater than between if you remember the for rc phase shift the gain of the oscillator should be equal to the 29 this is from the basic definitions when we try to solve this rc phase shift equation so the correct answer is the 29 okay just remember this this is a fixed value next when a number of two port when a number of two port networks are cascaded so here it is saying let's say this is a two port network let's say n1 and then n2 and if these are cascaded then in this case what happens is then they are saying which of these parameters are added like z parameters h parameter y parameter a b c d whenever the two port networks are cascaded then you know the a b c d which are the transmission parameters so they are normally multiplied so the correct answer is a b c d parameters are multiplied when the two port networks are cascaded okay next in a microprocessor interface so in a microprocessor what they are saying is the concept of detecting some error condition as an example of no match found so what happens is in microprocessor whenever an error condition or a fault condition occurs then what happens is the program execution will directly go to the trap and then this fault will be recorded so this trapping is nothing but the trapping the error conditions so the option so from the above options error trapping is the correct answer next when an information signal is multiplied by the auxiliary sinusoidal signal to translate its frequency the modulation is known as so let's say there is a information signal which is let's say am and then auxiliary sinusoidal signal which is let's say carrier and when these these two are multiplied then let's say this is am sin omega mt and then this is ac sin omega ct so when these two are multiplied of course the two frequencies will be generated wm plus wc and wm minus wc so this is nothing but a product modulator and the product modulator or the balanced modulator is a type of the amplitude modulation so this we know so the correct answer is the amplitude modulation next the direction of the net encirclements of the origin of the real imaginary plane so this is a nyquist plot when the real and the imaginary are there then in a nyquist plot then for the system to be stable then in this case we know from the what nyquist says is it has to be the number of times the counter clockwise direction this origin has to be encircled so which is the correct answer counter clockwise of the origin okay so this is coming from the definition next a transfer function of a discrete time system derived from a state model is given by so this is also a straight forward definition or the formula you can say where the transfer function is nothing but the same 